My name is Aaron Steele. I work at the Indianapolis Museum of Art in the Conservation Department. I'm their uh, conservation photographer as well as their digital asset manager. I went to school at Indiana University. Uh, I, my undergrad is in art education K-12. Um, I then stayed and worked on my art history, master's in art history, and then continue on and did uh, my master's in photography at uh, between a couple schools. But then I came back to school at uh, IU and got my master's in uh, library and information science, uh, specifically visual resource management. Let's see, this, I'm going on my fifth year here at the IMA and there's been a lot more of an interest in uh, the technology side of it. Uh, being in photography, I originally was hired here as a split time person between uh, the photography department upstairs, uh, more collection based photography and things like that, um, stuff you'd see in the magazines. Um, between that and down here in conservation. Within the five years that I've been here, it was kind of determined that there needed to be someone down here in conservation full time uh, for technology and foot photography support. Um, especially with the added desire of the conservators as well as the curators for uh, technical photography, um, which I handle most of. I work with the conservators who then work with the curators who work with whoever is coming around. So I'm always around meetings, I'm always around what's being done. Um, but I'm not necessarily the person that makes the decisions on them. I can tell you how to get something, a better shot of something. I can get a, uh, a better version of a photo or, or find a way to take a shot of something that we couldn't take a shot of before. Um, but in general, when it comes to the field itself or things like that, I don't know if I can really answer that. I can say in my own work, um, there's more photos. It's easier to take cam it's easier to take more shots, and there's cameras on everything. So keeping those organized uh, is becomes a bigger and bigger deal as you move forward. You have to be really detail oriented um, to work in a conservation department as far as I can tell. And even in my own job within it, it's extremely detail oriented. The difference between taking a, uh, a detail of a tear from the front or back can be the difference in that being done. Uh, one of the major things we do, um, which you might see in other videos or something like that, is treatment photography is one of the things I do a lot of. And uh, a mistake that can happen, you have to be very careful with before treatment. Before treatment means before anything's fixed. You can't shoot a before treatment shot after it's fixed. So any mistake you make on that front end of taking a shot, uh, you can't redo. So there's a lot of stuff that can't be reshot. There's no way to go back in time with a camera. Um, and so you have to stay con completely on top of that, uh, whether that's in the photo or that's in the digital management of the photo. Uh, the wrong session number, the wrong um, date that's put on it can be a very major uh, problem when it comes to someone coming out and trying to get that. And I, I'm not going to say I haven't made plenty of those mistakes. One funnier one is uh, you'll see maybe in some of the other videos or still images we use a, a small placard for um, where we put our numbers of what's being in the shot. So you have the painting and then you have a number of what it is. And if you're shooting multiple things in a day you might shoot 1988.34, 1988.35, 36, 37. If you don't remember to change that five or six, then that thing to anybody that sees that photo in the future would think that it's the wrong number because the number that's in the picture is actually there. So you have to be very astute of that, but when you make a mistake like that, you still have to fix it. And how do you fix an image? So you might sometimes have to go into Photoshop and take a picture of the number seven against a black background and physically drop it into every single image and then make a note in the metadata explaining that there's a change on that. So mistakes are often made, but usually they're easy to fix, not always though. One of the things that I have to do is constantly fight my urge as a personal photographer uh, that I do outside of work and what I do in my job. A lot of what I do is entirely impersonal. Um, I have to be able to separate myself the way I shoot something uh, personally versus how I would shoot it 
uh, in here. In here, for conservation, it's very nuts and bolts. It's very much exactly what we're trying to get out of it. And often, uh, you will get pictures that you would never want to see uh, out outside of that. You might get something extremely overexposed, but you need to overexpose it so that you can get a good shot. Uh, for example, in a painting, we often will use specular lighting. Specular lighting is often what we, what we see as flare, glare, that you go, I'm going to delete that on my own photo. But in our case, sometimes you need that glare. You have to have it so that you can get the surface appearance of a, of a painting uh, or whatever you're working on. Now that, that picture might be overexposed, it might not look right, but it could do exactly what you're actually trying to get. So it is a, I have to fight that urge to make something look nice or to make it frame up well. Um, sometimes you have to get the most uh, least aesthetically pleasing shots for that. Um, Having said that, there is, a, there's a, there is a degree of interpretation you have to do when you take photos. Um, I, specifically, I would talk maybe about x-ray, doing x-ray photography of a piece. Uh, when you do an x-ray, you're, you're determining a depth. At some point, you have to, to pick a depth that you're going to take a picture of. And that is, by however much radiation you put in, or x-rays you put through it, um, that's what it is. And it's not a lie. It is exactly what it is. But it depends on where you're trying to see. If you're trying to see the top layer of, the, of a painting or if you're trying to see maybe the, um, the back of the painting. Each one of those shots is entirely real. And at some point if they say, Aaron, we really need you to take an x-ray of this painting. And I go, okay, I have to take an x-ray. I can't take one for every single millimeter of it. I have to take one in the middle that hopefully is able to, to elicit the overall desired effect or desired um, request of the conservator or the curator. And often you're not necessarily right. They go, you know, we really want one that's showing the backing, or we're really trying to get that paint layer. And I go, okay, and then I will reshoot it. So even though there is some personal interpretation in there, that's usually just the means to get you going. And then you specify down from there. But a lot of what I do is, is like I said, is trying to stay away from, from really making something look pretty as opposed to, to making an image exactly what's desired by the curator or the conservator.